Crystal Palace are no doubt probably the biggest club in South London. They have spent a good bit of their history in the Premier League and especially in recent years they've been one of the most stable Premier League clubs. They haven't obviously been in a relegation battle but nor have they challenged for Europe either. So in today's video we are going to be taking a look at Palace's incredible stability and what they can do to maybe go that little step further in the future and maybe try and get into Europe. After a good few tough years in the early 2000s, the club was in a bit of a financial trouble. They went through some bad ownership. The club was just about saved from administration in 2010. You know, they were really close to ending up in a really bad financial situation. They did manage to get promotion back to the Premier League in the 2012-13 season, beating Watford in the playoff final at Wembley, which was a pretty good achievement. They stabilised relatively well in the Premier League then after promotion, you know, managing to get quite a few kind of like mid-table finishes in a row. Never really ended up in the relegation battle. I think the, the lowest they finished was 15th. So kind of good few years of kind of stability, which I suppose was needed for the club. A lot of people had doubts whether the club would be able to kind of, you know, maintain itself as, you know, a well-established Premier League club. They also went through a good few managers as well throughout those kind of years. You know, the likes of Sam Allardyce, Roy Hodgson, obviously probably being the most successful of all. We'll get on to talk a little bit more about him later. It's just stability, I suppose, was the main thing for Palace. You know, plenty of good years, plenty of underdog victories against the big teams as well. In 2021, Roy Hodgson did leave the club after an incredible four-year spell with the club. And they obviously appointed Patrick Vieira as his replacement the former Arsenal legend of course you know didn't have the best of kind of managerial experience but it was certainly an interesting appointment in his first season they did do quite well with a 12th place finish surprised quite a lot of people uh, to be honest he did have a lot of doubters and they were pretty good for most of last season but kind of towards the end of February beginning of March they ended up going on a bit of a bad run they ended up I think there were like six games without a win and they were kind of dropping down the table as the weeks were going by and the Palace board did decide to sack him which I think was a little bit harsh I think he deserved a couple more games to be honest but I could understand it and Roy Hodgson obviously came back to the club again despite you know being like you know retired he decided to come back into management again to try and help his club and they actually had a very good end to the season they won a lot of games they climbed right back up that table if he was there earlier they could have finished like eighth or ninth of course this summer saw the departure of Zaha obviously being a very very important player for them for many many years has scored plenty of goals and has been very loyal to the club as well you know there's been lots of interest you know for, for him you know from loads of different clubs around England and Europe so you know he was obviously going to be a big miss and it did make a few signings in the summer although that not that many and they've had a decent start to this season you know they've managed to get a few decent results and even when they lose, you know, they tend to only lose by maybe one goal, two goals at the most. They're not a team that, you know, get any hammerings or anything like that, you know. They obviously opened the season with a, you know, an unfortunate one middle defeat to Arsenal. They were quite good in that game. A 1-1 one -one draw to Brentford was followed by that, by their first win of the season, being a 3-2 home win to Wolves. They ended up losing 3-1 um, away to Villa, which obviously wasn't ideal, a draw then against Fulham. They ended up playing United two times at Old Trafford and actually managed to get a victory in the second one, managing to get a 1-0 victory. Um, the, you know, did really, really well in that game, defended very well. It was a very, very big victory for them. I know United have been struggling, but still. Um, Then they obviously picked up a couple of draws and then you obviously a defeat to Newcastle and a defeat to Spurs. And of course, they also managed to go win last weekend against Burnley as well at Turf Moor so that was pretty good going really so they've been kind of solid this season you know managing to pick up a few wins you know a few defeats every now and again 
But uh, that sort of is expected. But it'll be interesting to see where Palace can go this season, you know. I mean, if they were to get lucky, you know, with a few kind of teams around them dropping points, you know, they might even mount a, you know, a challenge, a challenge for maybe the top seven or the top eight, maybe that seventh place conference league spot. I know it is a big, big ask. But again, they do have a very experienced manager in Roy Hutchin. I know he's, you know, 76, but still, sorry for the bad pronunciation. It's just one of those names that it's a difficult, one to pronounce I know but um, it'll be very interesting to see how they do this season you know whether it'll be another mid-table finish I think definitely mid-table I think mean, there's no doubt about that but I reckon if they are lucky they can definitely go a little bit further than that you know like maybe even in the summer if they were to bring in another manager they're always a team that does very well at you know recruitment as well you know they often recruit very well they bring in a lot of very good young players especially from Liga, you know, especially when then um, Patrick Vieira was in charge, they brought in a lot of very good talent from Liga that have you know adapted to the Premier League very well. Taking a look at some of Palace's key players, of course, Jordan Ayew has been quite good for them this season. He's played quite a lot. You know, he's obviously been with the club since twenty nineteen, and you know, very very solid player. Of course, and um, we mentioned him on the channel when we're talking about the Mali national team. Of course, Decore as well, one of the best central defensive midfielders in the Premier League of course a fantastic player in the make I think 23 24 years of age and has been of an interest to a lot of clubs in England the likes of Liverpool and Arsenal there's some vague links with them as well so it'll be very interesting to see where he can go but he had a very good season last year and he was very very good so far this season of course Guehi as well the young centre back very very good player as well obviously joined them from Chelsea a couple of years ago after not really being able to make the breakthrough there but a very very good solid centre back to have of course, um, Anderson as well. He's been at the club for a few seasons now. You know, the Danish centre-back. He's been very, very good for them all. He's been an underrated centre-back. You know, he had that very good season on loan at Fulham in the 2020-21 campaign. And obviously, they went down. And obviously, then he went back to Leon And then Palace bought him. And he, he's done very, very well for them as well. Of course, another one as well is, of course, Olise. Probably one of the most exciting talents of all. Of course, he's out injured at the minute be interesting to see when he can come back what he can do but he was very very good for them last season playing most of his games in attacking midfield but he managed to get 12 assists in the Premier League last season you know which is very very good going and uh, definitely going to be very interesting to see where his career can go of course Eze as well you know he's been quite good for them this season you know very skillful player a bit like Eze or a bit like uh, Olise can kind of play both on the wing and in attacking midfield field a very nice versatile player as well you know definitely be very exciting to see where his career can go as well and what he can do this season he could probably do with improving his goal scoring a little bit to be honest you know but definitely a very very good player there's no doubt about that and of course there's many many others as well you know and um, they do have a very very solid team and they've pretty good squad depth as well you know like as I said at the start of the video the recruitment has been very very good as well another interesting thing about Crystal Palace is when you think of English football you never really think of ultras groups you know when you think of ultras groups you know you normally think of the Bundesliga Serie A those types of leagues a little bit in Liga as well but would you believe Crystal Palace are actually the only Premier League club to have an ultras group that turn up to the game with flags, TIFOs, all that type of stuff? You know, the stadium Shellhurst Park does always have a very, very good atmosphere. You know, it's a very, very tough place for, you know, away teams to go. You know, the likes of Man City, Liverpool, they always tend to struggle away at Palace. You know, that is one thing about them. They do often have a very good atmosphere. So do let me know, Palace fans, if there is any watching this video, where do you guys think you can go in the future? You know, who do you think might manage you after Roy? You know, it'll be interesting to see will he do another season, you know, to be going at 
76 years old is incredible. Some massive credit to him. I think he used to be one of the oldest managers in Premier League history, if I'm not mistaken. So huge credit to him. No doubt a legend of the club for all he's done over the past few years and to come back and kind of help them in that situation as well was a very big commitment. So do let me know that in the comments. Also let me know uh, how do you think the next few seasons are going to go? Do you think it's going to be kind of more mid-table finishes that kind of maybe 14th to 9th kind of places or do you guys think you can finally start to kind of challenge for Europe a bit like kind of West Ham have been the last few seasons that type of team try and finally get into Europe have kind of a different scenery of the season look mid-table Premier League football is great you know it's very good to be a very stable club as I've said like in the title of today's video but it would be cool I reckon to challenge for Europe or to even try and finish a bit higher up I do think it would be very very good for the club and they're always a club I've had a soft spot for as well they're definitely a very good club as I said the biggest club in South London there's no doubt about that so anyway do let me know that in the comments make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video thank you very much for watching